Hey, good morning. Good morning. Here we are, another day, another beautiful pool project, except this one's a little different. Ready to have some fun on this one? We're going to have a lot of fun because it's my pool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've had uh, several pools in the past, uh, but they've all been built in California for us and our family. And, and I want you to get your feelings hurt. I'm not really building it for you now. <laughs> I'm building it for the grandkids. And we'll be designing this pool with those grandkids in mind, which means a shallower pool. And we'll also have the environment to deal with. The ground is not flat and there's a massive drop down into the ravine. So we'll need to dig the pool level and put up a freestanding wall. How cool is it gonna look though, as we have that water dropping off into the forest here? We have fire on each side of the pool, kind of lighten up the spillway. I think it's gonna be really dramatic. So we're gonna put a pool in, we're gonna put the spa in, we're gonna put a play pool in, we're gonna put a negative edge in, we got fire going on, we got all kinds of stuff, but before we can do any of that, you have to have your mom figure out what kind of tile she wants. You gonna help with that? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Right. Let's go take a look. This episode is sponsored by Aquabella, who provided the tile and stone for this project. Hey, Rob, why don't we get the team together and we'll go ahead and establish these elevations. Sounds good. Hey, Manolo. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, but every yard, and people always think, when you look at a yard, especially one like this, it looks level, but they're deceptive, uh, especially when they kind of slope off. We're going to find that out. We're going to have to put the pool in a place that we feel is level and is can tie into the house. But I also want to tie in a walkway over here, so we're going to have to figure out how to tie it in over there. I think the difference between that concrete and the, the, where the tractor's at is probably about two feet. Anybody uh, want to bet on that one? We'll see. Uh. <laughs> Oh, Paul, it's not two feet, it's more like three feet. Are you kidding me? That's three feet lower than the concrete? Three foot difference. Even after all these years, it's deceiving. I think what we're gonna have to do is split the difference. Okay. And then figure out where to put some walls in and put some steps in here. Why don't we go ahead and move the tractor back and we'll start painting this thing out and we'll determine the elevation. You're out here looking over the cliff. Actually, it's a little bit of concern my, of mine too. This is all fill here. Okay. And because it's all fill, and we're gonna have negative edges going over here, or affinity edges going here. Once we get down to about five feet, right. let's make sure we do a test. We want to try to see if we can get 90% impaction. Okay. The pole will anchor that. If not, we're gonna put anchors in. Okay. We'll either put a pier in here, or we'll put a key way in here. Last thing my wife is gonna accept is that pool, when I told her it's gonna be up here, show up down there one morning. We'll make sure it doesn't happen. We're on the happen. same page? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? I do, I do. All right, buddy. Let's Thanks see what so we much. got. Thank you. All right.
made some good progress on Paul's pull to this point. We've actually got the excavation complete and we've got the form up. Now, what is interesting about this project so far is we thought this area was a whole lot flatter than it turned out to be. And what we mean by this is the portion that is closer to the house versus the portion that is farther away from the house near the negative edge is actually close to a three foot elevation drop. So over here, we've got our Cabo shelf or kitty ledge or tanning shelf. This is called many things, but ultimately what this is, is this is a shallower zone that is multi-use. One is we can actually set chase loungers in here. Now you're gonna see that this is vastly oversized at this point in time. What you wanna do when you're building these shelves, you wanna make it at least about six foot wide, because if you think about a chase lounger, they're about six feet. But the main reason that we did this for the project and Paul's project, it's for the kids. For us to have a nice shallow zone for the kids, perfect area to splash. This pool is unique in that the deep portion is in the middle with the shallow zones on both sides. This allows for a more relaxing experience, much like you'd see at a resort pool. Now what we're doing here is we've actually got this trench. This is going to be where the main drain is. And because this is an in-floor system, what you're gonna see in the next phases is we've got all these little heads that pop up, these little jets that are gonna push that dust, that debris down to this point. This is where you're gonna have the dust collectors that are gonna kind of suck it up like a vacuum and take it right out of the pool. Now, because of that three foot elevation difference, we didn't have to dig that pool as deeply as we originally thought. The forms we put up are there to have something to shoot the concrete material against, as well as preventing cave-ins from all the rain in the area. So we've got our first 10 yards of rock here. Now what we're gonna do with this chip rock here is we're actually gonna backfill all these trenches. The reason that you wanna do this and not just with the dirt that we took out of the yard is the problem is there's really big rocks. You start to pour those really big rocks on it, it's gonna burst your Would pipe. you get off the rocks for crying well, out loud? 40 years and you're still playing in the rocks. Hey, I wanna get this uh, infinity edge right because we're gonna have three different textures on this and it's real tricky because of the slope and as you can see, it's tailing off here. So to cover this, all this plumbing up, we're gonna have to bring in probably about 30 or 40, three or four truckloads of dirt. Then I hope to kind of blend it back in. But here's what I want to make sure we get right because we're working with three different textures is I went over this with your mom and this is exactly what she wants, okay? So we got this, this uh, marble coping. So you've got this approved by the boss then? Three times, okay. yeah. She made me repeat it three Just times. Just as long as we're approved. Okay, because I'm gonna make you repeat it twice, so I'm not gonna take any blame for any of this. So we got the coping here, which is that beautiful white marble coping. And then we're gonna put this brick on the pillars 
because we want to tie in with the house and we're gonna put a white grout in between this. And between the brick, we got that translucent tile that we're gonna put on the infinity edge, but then we're gonna put that really beautiful white split face. So what do we have now? We got the tile, we got the split face, we got the brick on the pillars, and then we got the coping, and that's all gotta kinda tie together. You got this? Cause I'm not gonna take any responsibility for any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just say I was listening if to If it was a customer, yeah, years. but now I have to deal with your mom. So it's your, your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're gonna tackle the pool equipment and boy, does this have a lot of technology on it. Hey Greg, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Why don't you go ahead and give us a little tour of what is going on here on this equipment pad? So what we have here is a variable speed pump. What's great about these is you can adjust the RPMs up and down, kind of like a 10 speed bike. Very energy efficient and a lot quieter compared to your, your older single speed pump. So a lot of people like it for that feature as well. And then what we have here is our, our filter. This is actually a 580 filter. It's a little bit bigger than normal, but our pool's a little bit bigger than normal. It's gonna be able to filter out a lot more. And this is a cartridge. So all you do is you just take it out, hose it down, put it right back in, and you fire it back up and you're good to go. From the filter, the way this system's gonna be designed is it's gonna come back here to the heat pump. This is actually a heat pump and a chiller. This is gonna be really nice to kind of do that maintaining of the pool, kind of like your HVAC system in your house. You just kind of want to keep it around the 70, 72 degrees. This will do that for you. And then going from there, we go into our standard gas heater. This is a JXI 400, so 400 BTUs. And this is the one thing for like your spa that you really want to ramp it up, get to that 104 degree temp because you want to get that heat or if maybe you need to bring up in the winter time, the pool 20 degrees, this is gonna do it a lot better for you. And that's the basics of all the equipment here. Now, John, we're really excited about this plaster, but uh, my wife and I have figured out kind of a recipe. You know, she wanted the glass, of course. She wanted the abalone, of course. I just want to see kind of how it all works together and if it's going to shimmer like I think it's going to shimmer. Well, let's so, take a look at some of the stuff we brought for you. So number, number one, you wanted some shimmer, like you said, right? right? So we got you some abalone shell. When you say abalone, this is like real abalone and they, they grind that up or what? Straight out of the ocean. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this stuff will really shimmer and shine when you get that in the pool. Okay. As you can see. Oh yeah, it looks like there's gold reflection. tents and there's green tents in there. Look at that, there's even a little purple in there. That's really That's cool. my favorite stuff right yeah, here. Okay. This awesome. stuff really is what your wife's gonna wanna see. So this, you put on top or do you mix this inside? This, Paul, we're gonna mix inside with everything. Everything you see here is gonna get mixed into one big batch. It's basically a recipe. We're gonna mm -hmm. put that together and make a little cement and a few other colors of rock. And that's what's making up your pebble today. So I know you know what you're doing, you're the best. That's why I asked you to come up all the way from Austin, Texas to Nashville, Tennessee. But I can't wait for you guys to get started. So uh, why don't we get this going? Let's do it.
don't understand the process of how much work it takes. Not only do you have to put gravel in here, you have to compact the gravel, then you got to bring the sand in, then you got to level it with a level, and then this is just a great big Chinese checker game here, <laughs> trying to figure out all the pieces in here uh, to make sure it's level. As you can see, what we want to do is we're going to go all the way into the pool, and then we got 3,000 square feet more of pavers. So Daniel and team will be here for the next uh, <laughs> year. I'll be bringing them Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our biggest complaint of building pools for almost 40 years now is that concrete, first of all, discolors. Second of all, it cracks. All concrete cracks. The pavers don't crack. They have all these natural joints built in there. If it's going to expand and contract, which all concrete does, it's going to expand and contract in, in the areas that already have kind of the linear uh, joints in there. It's as hard as concrete. It'll stay like this. This is a 50 or 100 year uh, uh, surface here. It's a little more work, certainly a lot more money, but certainly worth the long-term investment. Yeah. What this polymeric sand does, as you actually dust it into the joints on the top, as it gets wet, it's actually a bonding agent. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna prevent those weeds from popping up in the future too. Well, it sounds like your mother. I mean, that was a sales pitch. She got to make me write the big check to put this in. <laughs> I, I think she was just like, this is what you're doing. Well, Brian, finally, after six months, we're sitting back and enjoying what we built. Isn't it nice? Oh, it's absolutely paradise. You know, what we wanted to try to do was fit this in with this beautiful forest setting, but how do we get all those fun features that the kids wanted? Yeah, and just building in a different territory. Now I know what the franchisees feel like. They all, there's different ways and different styles of doing things, different trade partner bases, different materials, and we experience the same thing. People do things a little bit different here in Tennessee and in other areas. So it was in some cases a little bit challenging and come, some cases really rewarding going through the process of you know, building a pool for ourselves. Well, you had a couple challenges here, right? You've got this beautiful nature, you've got acres and acres of trees, you've got this gorgeous house. The key is how did we tie all of them together? How do you tie them together? Well, it's where the color palettes come into play along with all the cool features we put in there for the kids. Well, and your mom has a lot to do with this, you know. <laughs> she's got an eye of, if, if, uh, if it's expensive, it's probably gonna work. We you know the beautiful part about this and having so much experience, we kind of built the pool to enhance the existing property. And because we were able to do that, and not only do we have the forest backdrop, but the barn backdrop, we could actually put a negative edge in there and the water just kind of drops into the forest, which is kind of an unusual feature but we also uh, designed uh, three fire pits. And what that does is it frames the negative edge. So we have fire as the water's going off into the forest. And as you all know, you know, you've got three kids. I really built it for them. I wanted this to look beautiful, but I really wanted it to be used by the grandkids. That's the greatest joy of all. We put the, the big uh, kitty ledge in there. And not only can the kids can play on there, we got an umbrella sleeve and a water feature that comes out of there. We got a huge oversized spa that could fit probably 10 or 12 people in there. It's 10 foot by 12 feet. Don't forget We're, the laminars. Uh, we put laminars in here. And probably the thing I like the most, I like the fact that we made it a play pool. It's deeper in the middle. It's five and a half feet deep in the middle, shallow on each side, three and a half feet and four feet in there. And so we can use the entire function of the pool. 
you know, what really opens us up and makes this a pool that we can use daytime, nighttime, is you've got the 27 lights on it. We've got the torches. We've got the fire pits. I mean, this is so much more than a pool at this point. <laughs> And we've got yard lights. We've got like 150 yard lights in this yard. So we got 15 acres. We wanted to be able to light up the whole property and look like a festive place. And I think we accomplished that. Well, and being able to see it from the space station doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> Does, doesn't hurt. <laughs> built this pool for our family and our grandkids and have something that we can just sit back and enjoy. I'll spend most of my time doing exactly what I'm doing right now. We built it for entertaining, but like I said, a pool isn't really a pool. It's not a part of your family unless everybody in the family can use it. Are you and the kids ready to start enjoying this pool? Absolutely, I know they are. <laughs> well, let's do it. If you love amazing pool transformations, subscribe to our channel. We'll be bringing you new content all month that you won't want to miss. Join our splashing community, follow along and get inspired. Who knows, your dream pool could be next.